Hi there, welcome to Floating in Dreams, welcome to Drugstore Week. These are my best, most favorite Kiko products. Welcome to everybody watching today. Thank you so very much for joining me. Welcome to Drugstore Week over on the channel. I asked you last month what you wanted to see from me in June, and so many people were saying, we want to see you do Drugstore Week. So here I am, and I thought we could kick things off with one of my favorite drugstore price brands, which is Kiko Milano. If you're new to the brand, if you don't know where to get started, or if you were just curious to know what my favorite products are by the brand, then this video is hopefully going to be helpful to you. Before we get into the video, it may be good to know who I am and what I like doing on this channel, just in case there are some new people watching me here today. Hi, welcome, my name is Micah, I live in the Netherlands, I have fair skin with a cool to neutral undertone, and this greatly influences how I feel about makeup. I have been reviewing makeup for more than a decade, I love trying out eyeshadow palettes, Essence and Catrice, and getting the use out of my makeup. So if that's something you're interested in, then I do hope you'd like to consider subscribing. So yes, Kiko, one of my favorite brands. So we're gonna have a deep dive into the brand that is Kiko Milano, which I think if you're in the US, may be a little bit hard to find, because I believe the Kiko US branch went bankrupt or something, that something happened there. Um, but you might still be able to find it through Ulta. So if you are in the US, try Ulta, or maybe if they still have an official website, then you can try there. I'm in Europe, so we have Kiko stores here. They are quite a big brand, and they may not be like a drugstore product in the sense that if you go into a European drugstore, that's where you will find Kiko. No, in order to find Kiko, you need to go to their standalone stores. They are not sold in a actual like place where you can also find Maybelline and L'Oreal and those kind of places. They have separate stores. Um, we have one here where I live in Rotterdam, but there's uh, I very often use their website as well. They do sales very often, so I definitely also feel that you don't need to pay full price for Kiko products if you do find them a little bit more expensive because they are a little bit more like the higher end of drugstore for sure. I think most products start around like eight or nine euros for like the cheaper things and their more expensive things go up to 20. So they're sort of like that mid-range, like, um, like mid-range price point when it comes to uh, most drugstore brands. I find them very comparable price point wise to a L'Oreal or a Max Factor or a Maybelline over here anyways. Um, Kiko Milano, as I mentioned, is an Italian brand and they are sold all throughout Europe. Um, and they are definitely worth looking into because I feel maybe it is because they're Italian and because so much luxury and high-end makeup is made in Italy, I have definitely felt in the past as I was using Kiko products that they feel very similarly to a Charlotte Tilbury, to a um, Lisa Eldridge, to a uh, Hourglass, Laura Mercier. There are definitely a lot of products in the Kiko line that are very comparable to items that are priced sometimes three, sometimes four times more expensive than what Kiko sells them for. And it's just a hunch. I'm, I can't verify this. I'm not an industry insider, um, but I definitely ha feel like Kiko is at least manufactured in a similar way to these higher end brands, meaning that you can get really good quality products at a much lower price point. This video today will be focusing on products you can get from Kiko's regular line. They also do regular uh, limited edition collections and I try them from time to time if they do anything that looks interesting to me. However, I have found through trying a lot of Kiko that a lot of the items that are in their limited edition collections rotate. So they'll have a limited edition right now and maybe a product sells out. And if that product is very popular, maybe six months from now or up to a year, we see those products coming back, but just in different packaging. Um, very often they keep the shades the same. They just change the packaging around and re introduce it to the brand, but then it's always again going to be that limited edition. So since those products can be harder to find, I did want to focus on things from the regular Kiko line, and even that already has so many gems in. So we need to start with complexion first. Now Kiko and primer, I don't necessarily love all that much. I do really enjoy their eyeshadow primer. It's in my shop, my stash, so I forgot to select it for this video, but 
I could have made this easily a top 15 if I wanted to, but I wanted to curate it down and really have it be a top 10. And I love Kiko for their foundation. They do some really, really nice ones. I tried the regular Insta, Insta Moisture in the past, which I already loved, but then they released this glow version. And ever since trying this, I've been converted. This is the dewier sister to the Insta Moisture, and I really enjoy it. Um, the Unlimited Foundation I tried last month. That was nice as well. It's just a little more coverage than I normally go for. So for my complexion, I like this better. They also have a cream foundation, a little compact. That can be nice for like touch up throughout the day. Um, they do so many different styles and different types of foundations as well. They have really good full coverage as well. So there's a little bit for everyone I feel in their line. Um, the only thing that you're gonna struggle with with Kiko is if, if you don't have light to medium skin, you may struggle finding your shade. I am shade 1R, which is very often their lightest shade. Now I do believe this comes in more shades. I believe there are lighter shades than this, um, but this one works really well. It's got a slight pink undertone, which is why it works for me beautifully. However, if you are in the very, very light end of the spectrum, or if you are in the very deep end of the spectrum, I don't th think Kiko is going to be the brand for you to try. They have improved over time, but especially also in their limited edition collections, I find the shade range to be appalling. Very often you only get like five shades and it's always too dark for me. So even though I love this foundation, I don't think it's going to be great for everyone. And I do tend to stick to their regular range, you could say for foundation like products, because I feel the shade range is just slightly better and they um, just do some really interesting formulas there. Then concealer wise, I also love this guy from Kiko. This is their skin tone concealer. And this is, as you can see, itty bitty. It only comes with 3.5 milliliters of product, but this is so good. I have mine in shade two because shade one is a green corrector, which is also nice. I just really enjoy this formula. It just can do no wrong. They have changed the packaging since the first time I tried it. This is my second time buying this. And as you can see, it's like pretty much going like halfway done already um, because there is not that much product in. So you can go through these really quickly. Um, but I have found that they've changed, uh, the, uh, applicator because the doe foot on it used to be able to rotate. So you could like paint your face with it. It was really, really fun to use. Um, but they've definitely changed it. The doe foot is now just static and you can just apply it as usual. This is really nice. It's one of the most affordable products in the line as well. And as I mentioned, this is a repurchase. I've bought this again after using it up completely because I just loved it that much. And it's currently in my shop, my stash as my like concealer to fall back on because I'm trying out some new concealers that I haven't tried much in the past um, to write reviews on and then be able to hopefully do like a roundup review over in the fall time to let you know which ones are my favorite and like rank them all. Um, but I like then having a concealer that I know I love in my shop, my stash that I can just go back to and just know it will look right no matter the day. And this is definitely what that Kiko uh, concealer does for me. So the skin tone concealer from Kiko is, I feel very underrated. Again, shade range wise, this one is a little bit iffy. They definitely have other concealers that are really good that come in a wider shade range than this comes in. I just don't love the formula of those as much. I just recently tried the full coverage concealer, which I really enjoy. Um, but it was a little bit too cakey and heavy for what I personally like to go for. But if you do like your full coverage, then that may be a good pick. And from what I remember, that came in like 25 shades. So it was a lot better than this one. Let's round up the complexion part with powder. Now the powder I'm holding up, I haven't tried enough to lab label it a favorite, but I just wanted to have the packaging here to show you a powder from Kiko because their Radiant Fusion powder is a holy grail in my collection. I have compared it to the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powder in Diffuse Light. Um, the Radiant Fusion I wear in shade one, which may be too yellow. <clears throat> wow which may be too yellow for some people, but for me personally, it worked really well, which is why I wanted to try this because this is their color correction powder. And this essentially is like these four pastel things. And then it just like 
ends up being a white powder. So they also do a white version in this packaging, which is called like some like the veil powder that I find slightly too mattifying for my liking. So I didn't love that. But this, I feel, has the same formula as the Radiant Fusion. So I feel that if you're super duper pale, this can be a really nice pick um, because I do feel this works a little bit more as a brightening powder on me as well. Maybe because of the color correcting powers it has, I, I'm not entirely sure. But as I mentioned, I don't like 100% can tell you that this is an absolute favorite. But the Radiant Fusion I used up last year after using it for two years straight, I didn't use a single different powder for the entire time that was in my shop, my stash, because I loved it that much, which for a powder and with how much makeup I have, you know that that's a good one. Plus, I definitely want to go back to it and repurchase it at some point. But first, I need to reuse up more powders in my makeup collection. And if you know anything about me and if you know anything about a Kiko, they do some really, really great products in this silver packaging. So if it all looks the same, trust me, on the inside, these products are all different. But also from this silver line, I really enjoy, I enjoy their bronzers, their blushes and their highlighters. So I have two different bronzers here. I have the Radiant Touch Bronzing Powder in 101 and the Flawless Fusion in 01. The Flawless Fusion I like a little bit better. This is a great cooler tone bronzer for me. That's not too yellow, not too pink. It's very neutral, but it still warms up my face and I love wearing this in the winter time. When I am at my palest, this bronzer actually works for me really, really well. It's never too much. I can pile this on. It's really, really lovely. It used to have an embossing of the Kiko letters in the middle. It's completely disappeared. That's how much I, I've used it. A little goes a long way with this, so I do feel I can get a lot of use out of it. This one I feel is in stock a lot more, but the Radiant Touch is one that is sometimes a little bit harder to find. I find this goes in and out of stock. Um, but this is my summer shade. And as you can see, I've not used this as much. It has a little bit more of a, well, pearl running through it. So this definitely has like a shimmer to it, but it just adds a bit of glow. It's not as if it's got like sparkles all over your face. Um, but definitely the Flawless Fusion, which is a bit more matte and slightly lighter is better for me personally, which is why this one ended up in my declutter pile. But because I do so many Kiko related videos over the year. I didn't want to get rid of it just yet because it is a good bronzer, the Radiant Touch one. It's just a little bit limited in when I can use it. And I definitely have to be a little bit more tan for me to work, be able to work with that one. So I mentioned loving the blush bronzers and highlighters in the silver packaging. The silver packaging of the highlighters and the blushes is just a smaller size to the bronzers and the powders. This is the Glow Fusion Highlighter in shade one. And I've had this for years and I had it in my shop, my stash the other month and look what happened. I'm not sure if the camera shows it, but there is a pin prick of a pan. I'm not sure if you can see, but it's like right there. And I do apologize for the nail polish. Um, I still need to redo my nails tonight, but there we go. It's got like a baby pin prick of a pan. So I'm super happy with that. It finally happened. Of course, Ooh, of course, I'm now sticking my nail in. <laughs> um, I almost dropped it, but I still have plenty of product left in the pan. Um, so a good amount of product. This is a very natural highlighter. Um, they also do like a glitter highlighter. They do several different highlighters in their collection as well. Also in this like silver packaging that I love, which I now remember I forgot to bring up here so I could have shown you, but Kiko for highlighter, I think is a really good one. But the Glow Fusion, if I hit pan on something like this, you know how much I love it and how much I use it. Like I said, I've had this for years and I adore this shade and I wear it a lot. And then I have two more shades here. These are the blushes. I have two of them. One of, the is, one of them is really old and you can no longer buy. The Shade Fusion Trio blush in shade five is one of my favorite mauve tone blushes I've ever owned. Um, it's been swatched, which is why it has this like white cast almost. Um, but I just swirl all three of the shades together. I think I got it around the same time as I got the highlighter. Um, so I've had this for in my collection for a long time. Love this, but you can no longer buy it, which is why I decided to try the unlimited blushes, which come in the same packaging. And this I really like. This is Warm Mauve, a shade 10. 
Uh, there's also a Cool Ma version. I really en en enjoy this. It is very similar to other things I already have in my blush collection though. So it wasn't like a must have in the sense of it like having to stay in my makeup collection because I did declutter this this year. But again, similar reason as the Radiant Touch bronzer I just mentioned, because I make so much content with Kiko products, I wanted to keep it around. And I realized I had never dedicated a review to this over on the blog. So this has been sitting on my vanity for the past few weeks. So I don't forget to take pictures with it so that I can actually review it because I th still think it's a really, really good product. It's just shade wise compared to all the other blushes I have. I felt I didn't need to keep this around per se, but just know that the unlimited blushes are just as good as the shade shade fusion blushes. That's what it was called. Yeah. It's like a similar formula, really good payoff. And this comes in so many shades. I do feel though that the selection in stores can be a bit limited. So for this, I would definitely recommend going online because I feel they have more shades there, but I could be wrong. And then the final product I need to rave about. And I think that this product came into this top 10 over the neutral eye base that I mentioned at the start of the video, but it's this, um, sculpting, sculpting touch, creamy contour shade, a uh, stick. I have mine in shade 200. I believe this now comes in more shades. I'm not entirely sure. It used to come in two. Um, and this may be called a contour, but for me, this is far too warm toned as a contour. So I use mine as a bronzer. And for me, this is a great bronzer. I have mentioned this so many times in previous videos as well. My hack as a fair skinned person with a cool undertone in my skin, I love trying contours for bronzers and using them that way because I feel it works much better. What is cool toned against a warm skin tone is not going to be cool toned on me, but I do feel this adds the kind of warmth that I wanted to have without it looking overly done. So this is also a tip from one of my subscribers to try this as a bronzer. And I'm so happy that I uh, actually caved and I ended up buying it because it's now one of my favorite stick bronzers in my entire makeup collection. I really adore this thing. Do I like it better than the Rare Beauty? You know what? I think I might actually. I think that compared to the Rare Beauty, I like this even a little bit more because of the shade just being slightly better for me. I already mentioned Kiko being similar to something like Laura Mercier, and I feel that these eyeshadow sticks that they do are very similar to the caviar sticks. I've never even felt the urge to try the caviar sticks from Laura Mercier because I already have these. I think I have like 15 of these. I've also decluttered some in the past that I really wasn't wearing and they do and redo different shades the entire time. They discontinue some, bring some back, etc., cetera, et cetera. Um, I have a really old one here in shade 38 that doesn't have the shade on the color, but on the actual stick. And the newer ones all have the number on the stick. This comes in matte shades, it comes in shimmers, it comes in really deep shades, it comes in really light shades. These are great as one and done eyeshadows, but they're also great as a base if you, for instance, wanna create a smoky eye. If you get like the black or the dark gray or a dark blue, it's instant effortless smoky eye. And then you just blend a powder on top and ta-da, you've got a smoky eye. I think this one, shade nine or six, I don't remember. This is a matte, and this is actually pretty good as an eyeshadow primer for me as well. Like if I really wanna have that like flesh tone sort of thing, I currently have my MAC Paint Pot for that, so I don't necessarily need this, but in a pinch or if I'm traveling, it is a much lighter weight product that is easier to use for sure. Um, and then I have 020, which is this like deeper taupe shade. I have 67, which I don't think they still do, but it's this really pretty sort of grayish, sagey green, such a stunning product for sure. So these eyeshadow sticks from Kiko, I have been raving about them for years. And if you've never tried them before, if you try just one thing from them, make it this. It's also one of the cheaper products. I think these retail for $9.99 over here. And as I mentioned, they do regular sales. So get a couple of these if they do like 25% off or if they do like buy two, get two for free deals. 
they do some really good deals. More eyeshadow. I have mentioned in the past how I don't love Kiko for eyeshadow palettes. I have now found eyeshadow palettes by the brand I love, but I think their eyeshadow sticks and their water shadows are still some of the best. They also do some really nice cream things, but I still think that the water shadows are incredibly unique in their formula. These can be used wet or dry. That's why they're called water shadows. I tend to use them dry mainly. I don't really tend to go for like wetting them or anything like that. They have reformulated these though. The water shadows used to come in matte black packaging that was far bulkier. Um, they come with a mirror and now it comes in this sleeker black packaging. Uh, zero four, uh, this is 14, which is I think mauve something. And I have zero 06, which is a taupe shade. Really pretty. These are more sparkly though than the old version, which is why I still have some of the older ones as well in my collection because those are more of like a satin and these are a little bit more shimmery, I would say. So these are, feel, they just feel more updated. I think like Kiko had to change a lot of their products because the European Union changed some laws for like glitter particles in makeup and how much it can contain and all that. So a lot of European brands had to uh, reformulate for that reason and therefore they had to reformulate the water shadows but I still like these they still perform really well and one of their eyeshadow sticks with one of the water shadows on top chef's kiss instant easy eye look some of my favorite one and done shadows are by Kiko and it shows finally I want to chat lips because Kiko can do really good lips good lipsticks as well um, I have one of the Velvet Passions here. This is in uh, 315, which is the mauve shade, which is one of the best cool tone mauves I have ever found, which is why this is still in my collection till this day. It has really nice packaging with the magnetic snap. Um, and one of the red shades I have, which is, I don't remember the number, but it's the cherry shade, is very similar to Lisa Eldridge's Velvet Ribbon. I do feel that the Lisa Eldridge one has a slightly different formula. This feels a little less sophisticated than the Lisa Eldridge, but if you want the look for less, the Velvet Passion range comes in so many shades. So I think they even do a green and a blue and a black lipstick and like bright purple and stuff like that. So they do some really interesting shades in the range as well, but they do some good nudes. They do good bright shades. They do good reds. This line is really amazing. And again, I believe they retail for around 10 euros. Um, but I also really like their Ultimate Stilo, Unlimited Stilos. This is another great sort of mauve tone. This is in shade 22. I don't remember if they still do this, but this like slimline packaging. I also love their formulas that they do in this. I actually did some, like I've done so many Kiko videos already on my channel in the past, but I made it my mission to try all of the different Kiko formulas in their lipstick range that they had at the time. So I did a video trying like one or two shades of all of these different formulas they have because they have a lot. They have everything from sheer to full on matte, glosses, everything in between. So I will definitely link that uh, video in the description box down below in case you're curious. And with that, I would like to round up the video right here. Thank you so very much for joining me today. Um, this is just the first video I'm doing in Drugstore Week. There's definitely more to come. So if you'd like to stay tuned for now, thumbs up this video if you like it. Subscribe to the channel if you wanna see more by me. I make several videos every single week. So if you'd like to stay tuned and then I hope to see you in my next one. Bye-bye.